from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2019. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to The Cube. Lisa Martin live on the Pure Accelerate floor in Austin, Texas. Dave Vellante is joining me, and we're pleased to welcome a couple of guests from Core Scientific for the first time to theCUBE. We have Jim Benedetto, Chief Data Officer, and John Curran, the SVP of Business Development. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you, pleasure to be here. So John, we're going to start with you. Give our yeah. audience an overview of who Core Scientific is, what you guys do, what you deliver. Sure, well we're a two-year-old uh, startup uh, headquartered out of Bellevue, Washington. And we really focus on two primary uh, businesses. We have a blockchain business and we have an AI business. Uh, in blockchain, we are one of the largest blockchain cryptocurrency hosting companies in North America. Uh, we've got uh, you know, facilities, uh, uh, four facilities in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Kentucky. And you know, really the, the business there is helping companies to be able to take advantage of blockchain and then position them for uh, the future. You know? um, and then on the AI side of our business, uh, really you know, we, we operate that in two ways. One is we can also co-locate and host people, uh, just like we do on the blockchain side. But primarily we're focused on uh, creating a, a public cloud focused on GPU-centric computing and artificial intelligence and we're there to uh, help you know, really usher in the new age of AI. So, you guys were founded, you said, two years ago. Now, from what I can tell, you haven't raised a ton of dough. Is that true, or are you guys quiet about that? Uh, uh, we're very well capitalized. Uh, okay, okay, so it hasn't hit crunch base yet. Yeah, no, so, so we're we're very well capitalized company. <laughs> We've got, you know, uh, to give you what a- what you do is not cheap. <laughs> no, no, we've got about 675 uh, megawatts of power under yeah. contract. So we, you know, each one of our our uh, facilities is about 50 megawatts plus uh, in size. So, no, it's not cheap. Yeah. They, they're large uh, installations and large build outs. It, to even give you a comparison, a standard data center is about five to 10 megawatts. We won't even look at a facility or a, a plot of land unless we can supply 50, at least 50 megawatts of power. So. So I was going to ask you, kind of describe what's different between a sort of blockchain hosting and conventional databases or, or, or data uh, centers. You kind of just did, but are there other sort of technical factors that yeah, you guys yeah, consider? Absolutely. Maybe talk I mean, about we we, uh, we we custom build our own data centers from the ground up. We've got patent pending technology, and we we if you look at virtually every data center in the world today, is is built with one thing at its core, and that's the CPU. The CPU is fundamentally different than the GPU. And if you try to retrofit CPU-based data centers for GPUs, you're not going to fully maximize the performance and the, the capabilities of the GPU. So we build from the ground up data centers focused with the GPU at the center and not the CPU at the center. And, 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 and is center in quotes? Because I mean, there's, you have all this alternative processing GPUs in particular that are popping up all over the place, as opposed to tra traditional CPU, which is okay, just jam as much as I can on the, 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 the real estate as possible. Is that a factor? Or? Well, there's also a lot, the GPU at the center, but then there's also a lot of supporting infrastructure. So okay. you've got to look at, first off, the power density is, is very, very different. GPUs pull, they require significantly a lot more power than CPUs do. And, they, and then also, just from a fluid dynamics perspective, it's very, the, the, the heating and the cooling of them is, is, is again, fundamentally different. You're not looking at you know, standard hot, cold aisles and, and raised floors. Um, but the, the overall goal also is, is to be able to provide the supporting infrastructure, which is from an AI ready design, is the, the, uh, the interconnect networking and also the incredibly fast storage behind it. Because the name of the game with GPUs is different than with CPUs. With GPUs, the one thing you want to do is you want to get as much data into the GPU as fast as possible because compute will very rarely be your limiting factor with the GPU, so the supporting infrastructure is, is significantly more important than it is when you're dealing with the CPUs. So the standard narrative is, uh, is well, I don't know about cryptocurrency, but the underlying technology of blockchain has a lot of potential. I personally think they're very much related, and I wonder uh, if you guys can, could, could comment on that. You started during the real, sort of, the latest most recent sort of big uptick, big uptick, I know this, it's bounced back in, in cryptocurrency. 
And so you must have had a lot of activity in, in really in your early days. Um, and then maybe the crypto winter affected you, maybe it didn't, some of those companies were so well capitalized. It was kind of their time to innovate, right? Um, and yeah, there was some bad actors, but that's really not the core of it. So I wonder what you guys have seen in the blockchain market. We'll get to AI and Pure and all that other stuff, but this is a great topic, so I wonder if you could comment. Well, so, I, I, you know, uh, yes, you know, there's certainly cyclicality in the blockchain market, right? And, you know, and, uh, you know I, I think one of the key things is being well capitalized allows you to invest through the downturns to position you come out stronger as the, the market came out. And, you know, and we've certainly seen that. Our growth in blockchain continues to uh, uh, really be substantial. You know, and we're making all the right strategic investments, right? You know, whether it's blockchain or AI, because you have such significant power requirements, uh, you know, you've got to be very strategic about where you put the facilities. You're looking for facilities that have large sustained you know, power capabilities, green, you know, we've seen uh, you know, carbon taxes come in, that'll adversely affect folks. We want to make sure we're positioned for long term in terms of the uh, capabilities. Uh, and then some geopolitical uncertainty has certainly affected uh, you know, the blockchain side of the business you know, uh, and has driven more business to North America which yeah. uh, you know, has been fantastic for us. But you're, to me, you're hosting innovation. You're talking blockchain and AI, I, I, like I say, include crypto in there. I'm sure yep. you, got, you have some cryptocurrency guys, right? In, in, in sure, we, we, yeah. we, we do blockchain, uh, cryptocurrency so, mining for ourselves as well. It, for yourselves, okay, but so, I mean, my take on it is a whole new internet is being built. Uh, and and, and the, 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 the crypto craze actually has funded a lot of that innovation. New protocol, I mean, when's the last, I mean, the, the, the protocols of the internet SMTP, HTTP, I mean, we haven't had, they're all government funded or edu education funded uh, academic institutions. And the big uh, internet companies sort of co-opted them. So you, you had a, a dearth of innovation, that's now come back. You guys are hosting that, that innovation, it's kind of how I look at it. Um, and I feel like we've seeded the base and there's going to be this massive explosion of innovation, both in blockchain, crypto, AI, automation, and you're in the heart of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think cryptocurrencies or digital currencies are, are, is really just the first successful experiment of the blockchain. And, and I see, I agree with you. I think that it, it, is, it is, is revolutionary and is going to, to, to change as many industries as the internet did. And we're still in a very nascent stage of, of the technology, but at core, we're, we're working to position ourselves to, to really be the underlying platform, almost like the Akamai of the early days of the internet. Uh, the underlying platform and the plumbing for, for both blockchain and AI applications. Right, I mean, whether it's smart contracts, uh, like I say, new innovation, AI, it's, it, it's, it's, it's all powering a next generation of, of distributed apps, really. Okay, so, um, sorry, this is a, I love this topic. I know you do. <laughs> Okay, so where do these guys so do fit we. in? So do we. Where, where, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's so exciting. It, 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 I, think, I think it's misunderstood. I mean, the people who are into it are, are believers. I mean, like myself, I really believe in a, in a value store. I believe in smart contracts, immutability, you know, and I believe in responsibility too and all that other good stuff. But, but so, uh, the innovation in, in private blockchain is just starting, right? You know, if you look at it, there's, there's just, there's, I think, going to be multiple waves in the uh, blockchain side. And, you know, we want to be there to make sure that we're helping power and position folks from both an infrastructure as well as a software perspective. Every financial institution, you know, you got VMware doing stuff. Libra, I love the Libra, even though it's getting a lot of criticism. It just, you know, shined a light on the whole topic. Um, but, but, okay, bring us back to sort of commercial mainstream. Uh, what are you guys doing here? What's going on with, with Pure? So we have built, we are the first AI ready certified data center. And, uh, and, and we've actually partnered very closely with Pure and NVIDIA. And as we went through the selection process of what type of, of stores we were going to be using to back our GPUs, uh, we went through a you know, variety of different um, evaluation criteria and Pure came out ahead and we've decided that we're, we're going with Pure and we, again, for me it boils down to one thing as, as, a, as a chief data officer is how much data can I get into those GPUs as fast as possible. And what you see is if you look at like existing you know, current uh, cloud providers, you'll see that the, 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 they're retrofitting CPU based data centers for GPUs and you see a lot of problems with that where you're just not, the storage that they provide is not fast enough to drive 
quote unquote warm or cold data into the GPU, so people end up using, adding more and more GPUs to actually just increase GPU memory when they're usually running around you know, a couple percent, like one or two percent, five percent uh, compute, but you have to add more just for, for the memory because the storage is so slow. So you had, Jim, you were saying before when we were chatting earlier that you have had 20 years of experience looking at different storage vendors, working with them. What were some of the criteria, you talked about the speed and the performance, but in terms of, you also mentioned, John, about that green is a, was a very important, is an important component of the way that you build data centers. Where was Pure's vision on sustainability, Evergreen, where was that a factor in the decision to go with Pure? Well, if you look at Pure's power density requirements and things like that, I think it's important. Um, well, one thing that, that also, <coughs> and this actually does apply from a sustainability perspective, where a, a lot of other storage vendors say that they're horizontally scalable forever, and but they're actually running different heads in, in, in a variety of different ways. Uh, Pure is the only storage vendor that I've ever come across that is truly horizontally scalable. And, and when you start to try to build stuff like that, you get into all the different things of supercomputing where you've got you know, split brain scenarios and fencing, and it's very complex. But they were, their, their ability to scale horizontally with just, uh, not even disk, but with just with this storage is something that, that was really important to us. I, I think the other thing that's you know, certainly interesting for our, uh, for our customers is uh, you, you know, you're looking at important you know, workloads uh, that they're driving out. And so the ability to do you know, in-place upgrades, business continuity, right, you know, to make sure that we're, not, we're able to deliver them technology that doesn't disrupt their business when their business needs the results you know, is critically important. And so Pure you know, is, is a great choice for us from that perspective. And the innovations they're driving on that side of the business has really been helpful. I read a stat on the Pure website where users of Core Scientific's infrastructure are seeing performance improvements of up to 800%. Are these, are you delighting the heck out of data scientists now? Yeah, is that I mean, what, those are the primary uh, users? That, that is, uh, that, that it, it, again, it references what we see with people using GPUs in the public cloud. Again, going back to the thing I just keep hammering on, driving data into that GPU. We had one customer that had somewhere around 14 or 15 GPUs running a, uh, an analytics uh, application and in the public cloud. And we told them, keep all your CPU compute in you know, one of the large cloud providers, but move just your GPU compute to us. And they went from 14 or 15 GPUs down to two GB100s in a, in a DGX1, and backed by pure storage with Arista, and from 14 GPUs to two GPUs, they saw an 800% increase in performance. Wow. Now, and there's a really important you know, additional part to that. So let's say, if, if I'm, running a dashboard or running a query and a, a 0.5 second query gets an 800% increase in performance, how much do I really care? Now if I'm the guy running, running 100 queries every single day, I probably do. But it's not just that, it's, it's the fact that it, allows, it doesn't just speed up things, it allows you to look at data that you were never able to look at before. So it's not just that they have an 800% performance increase, it's that instead of having tables with hundreds of millions of rows, they now can have tables with billions of rows. So data that was previously not looked at before, data that was previously not turned into actionable information to help drive their business, is now, they're now getting visibility into data that they didn't have access to before. So you're a CDO that, it sounds like you have technical chops. Yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm, is, a, I'm a tech nerd at but heart. It's, 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 so, it's kind of rare, actually, for a CDO. I've interviewed a lot of CDOs, and most of them are, you know, kind of come from a data quality background or a governance and compliance world. They don't dress like you. Not to, I mean, <laughs> they dress like I do. <laughs> yeah, even quite a, quite a bit better. But um, the reason I ask that is, is it, 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 you're, it sounds like you're a different type of CDO, like even a business like yours. I mean, I almost think I like agree a with data that. scientist. Just so describe your role, because it's... Well, I've actually held, I, I was with the company from the beginning, so I've held you know, quite a few roles actually. You know, I think maybe this might be my third title at this point. Um, okay. but, uh, but in general, I'm a very technical person. I'm, I'm hands on, I love technology. It's, uh, I, I've held CTO titles in the past as well. And, uh, and, right. um, but I, I've kind of, I've always been very interested in data and interested in storage because that's where data lives and uh, it's just a, it's a great fit for me. So I've always, I've always been interested in this because you know, the, the narrative is it's that CDOs sh you know, shouldn't be technical, they should be a business, and I get all that. 
But, but the flip side of that is when you talk to CDOs about AI projects, which is, you know, not digital transformation, but specifically AI projects, they're not intimate, most CDOs in healthcare, financial services, uh, even government, they're not intimately involved. They're kind of like, yeah, chief data officer, we'll let you know when we have a data quality problem. And I don't think that's right. I mean, I think the CDO should be intimately involved in those AI projects. And so, and it I seems think like a lot of times if you ask them, you ask, you know, a lot of people they'll say, Do you, are you interested in, in deploying AI in your, your uh, um, in your organization? And the answer is 100% yes. And then the next follow-up question is, what would you like to do with it? And most of the time the answer is, we don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So what I have found is, as I go into organizations, I don't ask if people want to use AI. I ask, what are your problems? And I think the, uh, what, what, what problems are you facing? What KPIs are you trying to optimize for? And there are some of those problems, there's, there are some problems on that list that might not be able to be helped by AI, but usually there are problems on that list that, that can be helped by AI with, with, the right, with the right data in the right place. So my translation of what you're asking is, how could you make more money? That's, that's what really, it comes down to. That's what you're asking. How could you I, cut costs or raise revenue? That's really ultimately and, and what you get data, to new customers, yeah. <laughs> you get. Know. Data, yeah. I, I think the other interesting thing about our partnership with, with Pure, uh, and especially with regards to Aerie, right? Aerie is an exciting technology. But for a lot of you know, companies, as they're looking to get started in AI, there's almost this moment of pause of, well, how do I get started? Right. And then if I look at you know, some of the greatest technology out there, it's like, okay, well, now I have to retrofit my data center to get it in there. Like there's, there's a bunch of technical barriers that slow down the progression. And what we've been able to do uh, with Airy in the cloud is really to be able to help people jumpstart that, to get started right away. So rather than, you know, let me think for six months or 12 months or 18 months on what would I, you know, what would I analyze, start analyzing, get started, you know, and you can do it on a very cost-effective OpEx model as opposed to a capital-intensive CapEx model. Uh, uh, all right, so I got to ask you, and, yeah. and Pierre will be pissed off that I'm asking this question, because you're talking about Airy as a, I mean, it's, it's real and I want some color on that, but I felt like when the first announcement came out with NVIDIA, it was like rushed so that Pure could have another first. You know? <laughs> and Ick was drawing like, we beat you know, the competition. But, but you, the way you're talking is, is Aerie is, is, is real, you're using it, it's, 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 a, it's a tangible solution that yeah, is adding value a, to your business. It's a, it's a core solution it was a year in, ago, in our, but, yeah. in our uh, facility. You know, it's, a, it's a core thing that we go to market with and it's something that you know, we're seeing customer demand you know, to go out and uh, you know, really start to drive some business value, so a absolutely. A core component of helping them jumpstart that AI. Well you guys just, I think an hour or so ago, announced uh, your new partnership level with Pure. John, take us away as we wrap here with the news. Yeah, so, uh, well, we're really excited. Uh, you know, we're uh, one of a handful of uh, elite level uh, MSP partners for Pure. Uh, I, I think there's only a few of us in the world, so that's exciting, and, and we're really the one who is uh, focused on bringing uh, Airy to the cloud. And so, you know, it's a unique partnership, it's a deep partnership, and it allows us to, you know, really coordinate our technical teams, our sales teams, you know, and be able to bring this uh, technology you know, across the industry, and so we're excited. It's just the start, uh, but you know, it's a great start, and we're looking forward to you know nothing but upside from here. Fantastic! You have to come back, guys, and talk to us about a customer who's done a jump start with Airy and just taken the world by storm. So we thank Absolutely. you both for we'll stopping to by the cube. All right, John, Jim, thank, thank, you, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Really appreciate it. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching the cube from Pure Accelerate 2019.